Hey everybody, this is David of Barnyard Bees. Out here in the bee yard for a little bit and looking around, the grass is girded up. It's time to get something underneath these hives. Uh, I'll start off by weed eating it really good and then I'll mix up my, and you've seen the videos, my past videos where I mix up the salt solution and spray that under the, the hive and a little bit of dish soap, just a real tiny amount. And you can also add a little bit of vinegar to it. That all kind of helps, it's a, like a natural weed killer. Works very well. Uh, the more bare that you can keep that dirt underneath and the grass dead, the less hive beetles and such you're gonna have. And then another thing it does too, I have chickens. So if you can keep it bare, the chickens will dig it and they will look for those hive beetles. And it works very well. They they don't dig too much if they see a lot of grass. They just kind of pass it by. They see bare dirt, they're going to come and start digging. And so this week, I'm going to make sure and get that cleaned up. Another thing I want to talk about was the amount of rain we've had. Now, uh, these packages have been installed now. Uh, I'll have to look at my notes. Three or four weeks. And a lot of people will ask, well, how long do you should you feed your bees? And, well, they're still taking, as you can see right there, what I've put in there is gone already for a few days, a couple of days ago. Uh, but when it rains, and they don't get to come out and forage much, yes, they're going to take down more. And make sure that you're mixing a one-to-one. -one. You no longer, this time of year, need a two-to-one mix. Two-to-ones to keep the moisture content down. So... Mix them one to one, it mimics more of the natural nectar. And like I said, when 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 it's real cold, when it's it's been cold, it was cold last night. Nights have been cold, and the days it was been rainy. And those bees are not going to forage much. You're trying to get these packaged bees built up. So I recommend feeding them. Continue to feed them, especially because these. There's nothing that you're going to expect honey of this year with a new installed package. So feed them and take, give them what they'll take because it'll come to a point. I mean, they're working. You can see they're out of sugar water and they're bringing a lot of stuff in. So when you get to about mid-April, you're almost at peak. Or you basically are at peak. I always said mid-April, mid you're at peak here in North Georgia. Now... What's this little colony here? Very active, bringing in a lot of pollen, nectar. So, and but I can bet too that their food, of course, is drained and gone. And they'll come, like I said, they'll come to a point to where they're bringing so much in, they'll start ignoring your sugar water, and then it starts sitting there for a week or longer. And at that point, when you sit sitting there for more than two days or so it's time to hold off on the sugar water and let them just bring in food on their own uh, because they're not taking it they don't have any interest in it like they did before they was hungry before there wasn't a lot but now there's a lot everything's bloomed out uh, we're at april 13th so we're, we're right at mid-april so the rest of this month and halfway into may we're at prime time beekeeping season and then from there it'll level off and it'll slow down a little bit into june into july into the dearth then the dearth you know what that is is uh, the lack of the lack of nectar and pollen where they all slow down but it's still hot outside and uh that's uh when you might have to start resuming feeding depending on what you have at the time and depending on what you're doing at the time, if you're doing making splits and dividing bees, yeah, you absolutely got to feed. So just a little short video tip from Barnyard Bees. I wanted to make this video about pertaining to the rain and what you should do with the packaged bees and how long you should feed them. Uh, like I said, just play it by ear. Uh, typically, you know, four or five weeks, six, you know, it just depends. It could go on a little bit further. If you have a bad rainy season, it could st stretch a little bit longer. Or if, if it's just perfect, it could, it could be shorter. 
it just it's just one of those things you just gotta watch your bees and see what they're doing and you'll know when they slow down on it then you know it's time to pull that nectar back and just let them go let them get their stuff and keep an eye on them now this time of year these bees are gonna fill these hives out really quick and the next thing you know they're gonna multiply and then what you'll see you'll start seeing drone sales not just a handful but a lot that's first indication they're getting ready to swarm so you know you need to start thinking from there what do i do now do i ex expand and uh, make my hive bigger or do i just go ahead and split and make me more hives whether you buy a queen make a queen or whatever you do but it's all about management and, and keeping an eye on them and keep them on the, the path that you want them to go. It's all about management and watching them. So that's about it. We'll go ahead and end this video. It's nice out. It feels, I think, maybe 75 degrees. I just walked out past my garden. It's looking wonderful. I bought my tomato plants today at the Big D Flea Market in Dalton. Saved a lot of money on plants there uh, compared to where you buy some of those other brands that the... Uh, at your local chain supply stores that are three four dollars per plant i got these for 50 cents a plant and very healthy plants i get them from every year they're a six pack of uh, tomatoes peppers whatever you want three dollars a six pack big d flea market in Dalton, georgia in case you ever up that way so don't forget folks please click, click on the little bell like and subscribe thanks for watching barnyard beast